This week we're going to go over chapter 10. We're only going to be covering TA and lateral. In the next few weeks we'll be going over thoracic um, viscera. We're going to be going over the chest for lateral decubitus and for rhodotic positions. But for this week we'll only be concerned about the PA and lateral chest. So body habitus, we've gone over that. And these were the four kinds, hypersthetic, sthenic, asthenic, and hypostenic. This is very important to know when you're doing your chest x-rays, whether you're going to be doing it lengthwise or crosswise. And the thoracic cavity is bounded by the walls of the thorax. It extends from the superior thoracic aperture to the inferior thoracic aperture. And the diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. Thoracic cavity contains the lungs and the heart, organs of the respiratory, cardiovascular, and lymphatic systems, the inferior portion of the esophagus and the thymus gland, and there's three separate chambers, the pericardial, and the right and left pleural cavities. The mediastinum separates the pleural cavities, contains all the thoracic structures except for the lungs and the pleura. And you can see here that the right lung has three lobes and the left lung has two lobes. And this obviously is showing you what the ribs removed. The respiratory system can it consists of the pharynx, the trachea, the bronchi, and the two lungs. The trachea is a fibrous muscular tube with 20 to 16 to 20 C shapes, cartilage rings in its walls for strength and the measurements it's prop the diameter is approximately a half inch or 1.3 centimeters the length is four and a half inches or 11 centimeters the posterior aspect is flat lies in the middle anterior to the esophagus the trachea the carine is a hook-like process on the last cartilage the trachea divides or bifurcates at the carina separating the right primary bronchus and left primary bronchus, and each primary bronchus enters at the corresponding lungs. The right primary bronchus is shorter, wider, and more vertical than the left. The position and size make it easier for foreign bodies to enter the right bronchus. Subdivision of the bronchial tree, the primary bronchi, secondary bronchi, tertiary bronchi, bronchioles, terminal bronchioles, and the terminals communicate with the alveolar ducts. The anatomy of the alveoli, alveolar ducts, and in the alveolar sacs, walls of the alveolar sacs lined with the alveoli. Oxygen and carbon dioxide exchanged by the diffusion of the alveoli. Millions of alveoli are in each lung. And here is a diagram of the bronchi and the alveoli. Anatomy of the lungs, organs of respiration, superior portion is the apex, it reaches above the clavicle, the inferior is a base, it rests obliquely on the diaphragm, it's lower in the back and sides and in the front. The sides are the costophrenic angles and the medial border is the hilum. The right lung is shorter than the left because of the presence of the liver. It's broader than the left, moves inferior during inspiration, and moves superior during expiration. Each lung encloses a double wall serous membrane sac called the pleura. The inner layer is a visceral pleura, the outer layer is a parietal pleura, and each lung is divided into lobes. The three have the right has three lobes, which I discussed earlier, and the left has two lobes. And here you can see a diagram of the right and left showing the lobes. You have the interior aspect and then the lateral aspect. The mediastinum, it's the area of the thorax bounded by the sternum anteriorly, the spine posteriorly, and the lungs laterally. The structures associated are the heart, the great vessels, trachea, esophagus, thymus, lymphatics, nerves, fibrous tissue, and fat. 
And here's a clicker question. Which lung has three lobes, right, left, neither, or both? As we discussed, the right lung has three lobes. There we go. Aspirated foreign objects are more likely to lodge in the answer is A, the right primary bronchus. The liver, the trachea bifurcation is the carina. So I added some images here of a chest x ray. So when I come out to your sites, and we look at your and your images. It's very important that you know each of these. We're going to be going over this. So know your anatomy. <clears throat> and here I added additional slide here it shows you normal anatomy. And then you can also look to the right here. So your carina is at number five here. So that's important to know during our image critique. And then also I added this slide here of your lateral chest. Very important to know the anatomy when we're going over your images in your clinic or hospital. So general procedure guidelines for the chest x-ray. General procedural guidelines, patient preparation, general patient position, image receptor, the IR collimated field size, source to image receptor distance, identification, your markers, radiation protection, shielding, and then giving proper patient instructions which was taking a breath, blow it out, take another deep breath, and hold it. So patient prep, make sure necklaces, any artifacts, any piercings, anything that they can remove. And secure all patient possessions in the designated manner and location. If you don't have, the restroom doesn't have a locker, it's best that the patient keeps the value their items with them at all times so they can bring them in the room with them. General patient ambulatory patients when I'm upright or seated, non-ambulatory patients determine whether air food levels are critical to the diagnosis may have to substitute a cubitus position if the patient cannot sit upright. IR of the collimated field textbook gives the guidelines use smallest IR that demonstrate anatomy and collimate the field size to the area of interest. SID, we've gone over this, at least 72 inches to minimize magnification of the heart and increase the recorded detail. ID markers, right or left side markers must be included on each image. Most time you would use, if you're doing a PA, you would use your left marker. You want to try to avoid using digital annotation to put the side markers on the images. Otherwise, required ID markers must be in the blocker or elsewhere in the final image. And you want to make sure that we try to keep your markers out of any anatomy. <clears throat> Radiation protection. Shield the patient of reproductive age and pediatric. Pediatric patients, you can refer to the guidelines of the radiation protection, use close collimation and optimal technical factors. Patient instructions, explain and demonstrate positions when possible. Respiration instructions are critical to image lung aeration and exposure is usually made after the second deep inspiration. Two separate radiographs may be taken, one on inspiration, one on expiration. Demonstrates a new more thorax, diaphragm movement, presence of foreign body, and atelectasis. 
essential projections of the lungs. So PA lateral, PA oblique, AP oblique, AP and axial. Like I said, we're just going to be going over the PA and the lateral. So 14 by 17 and column 8 to the patient size. PA upright if possible to demonstrate air or fluid levels and to allow the diaphragm to move at its lowest position. Patient faces vertical grid with mid sagittal plane centered, weight equally distributed on both feet. The top of the IR one and a half to two inches above the shoulder. Flex elbow and rest back of hands low on hips. Depress shoulder in the same transverse plane. Roll shoulder forward. So you should be going through the inferior portion of the scapula, which is at the level of T7. And here we have here. Lateral chest, the side placed closer to the eye, the side demonstrated in the image. Most of the time we do a left lateral to minimize the magnification of the heart. So left lateral is routine. Occasionally you'll have to do a right lateral, but that's by special request. So patient position, upright if possible, same reasons as for the PA, top of the IR, one half, two inches above the shoulder. Um, some techs are taught to lower, for the lateral position, is to lower your IR approximately half inch. And generally you could look at your PA position and determine whether you need to lower your IR for the lateral. So true lateral position, the MSP is parallel with the IR, mid coronal plane is perpendicular to the IR, shoulders in contact with the grid, extend arms over the head, flex elbow and rest forms our head. The patient is not mobile, providing an IV stand or some x-rays uh, have the bars that the patient can hold on to for the lateral projection. The CR is directed perpendicular to the IR, and it enters the patient at the level of T7, which is the inferior portion of the scapula, and the exposure is made at the end of the second deep inspiration. And we'll stop right here and go into our next slide. Okay, continuing on, this is slide 53. The patient position, supine, used when the patient is too ill for upright positions. Part position, center, MSP to the IR, top of the shoulder, one and a half, two inches above the, sh the shoulder. The patient condition, permit, flex elbow, pronate hands, and place hands on hip to draw scapula laterally. Adjust the shoulders into the same transverse plane. And perpendicular, the CR is perpendicular to the long axis of the sternum and center of the IR. And there's three inches just below the juggler notch. Exposure made after second full inspiration. So we're going to move on to slide 66 here. This is evaluation criteria of the chest. Central projections of the chest, lungs, and pleura. This is the evidence of proper collimation in the entire lung fields from the apices to the costophrenic angle. No rotation. Sternal lens in the clavicle equidistance from the vertebral column. Trachea visible in the midline and it's equal distance from the vertebral column to the lateral border of the rib on each side. Proper shoulder rotation demonstrated by the scapula projected outside the lung fields. Proper inspiration demonstrated by 10 posterior ribs visible above the diaphragm. At least one less rib, lesser rib is visible on expiration. Sharp outlines of the heart and diaphragm, faint shadows of the rib and superior thoracic vertebrae visible through the heart shadow. And the lung markings visible from the high lip to the periphery of the lungs. 
So this is what your chest x-ray should look like. So if you count the ribs, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's an ideal chest x-ray with deep inspiration is ten ribs are visible. See the apices and the costrophinic angles collimated on the side. Only thing there is no marker. You need to have your left marker, which would be right over here. So lateral chest, evidence of proper collimation. Armored soft tissues not overlapping the superior lumpial, costrophinic angles and the lower apices of the lungs. High limb in the appropriate center of the radiograph. Superimposition of the ribs posterior to the vertebral column. The lateral sternum shown with no rotation. Long axis of the lung field shown in vertical position without forward or backward leaning. Open thoracic intervertebral spaces with the intervertebral foramen, except in patients with scoliosis. Penetration of the lung fields and heart. Sharp outlines of the heart and diaphragm. So there's your lateral chest x-rays. Still missing the marker. But you can see that there's no rotation of the ribs right here. And your vertebrae is in alignment. And you can see the outline of the heart. There's your claustrophenic angles. And so we'll skip over here. We'll go over to slide 78. AP chest, evidence of proper collimation, entire lung field from the apices to the cosmetic angles, no rotation, sternal ends of the clavicles, equal distance from the vertebral column, trachea visible in the midline, equal distance from the vertebral column to the lateral border of the ribs on each side, clavicles lying more horizontally and obscuring more of the apices and in the PA projection. This we're being looking at a supine chest here. Faint images of the ribs and thoracic vertebrae visible through the heart shadow. Pleurovascular marking is visible from the hilar region to the periphery of the lungs. And that's what an AP supine chest would look like. So that's it for this portion. Like I said, we just went over the AP and lateral chest, and the next couple of weeks we'll be going over the lordotic and oblique chest. So this concludes the PowerPoints for the chest. Thank you.